right torsion of a shaft so how we can transfer the torsion that is the torque from one shaft to another shaft is always transferred by means of shear stress and shear stress can occur in two way one on lateral surface that is the circumferential surface and the second is cross sectional area both are responsible for shear stress and shear stress because of shear stress we can transfer the torque for example consider here that we have one insert and we have one hub when insert will place inside the hub we get the arrangement and if we rotate this one then this will also going to rotate so in this case the shear stress will produce on this side that is on this area and is producing on circumferential area that is called as lateral area so this one is shear stress so on this inside portion you will get a shear stress in opposite direction whereas if you see the case of this one that is a flywheel and the clutch plate arrangement so clutch plate will mounted on this one so this time the shear action is taking place on the cross sectional area so again you can transfer the power from engine to the your main drive using the clutch plate and flywheel but this example is of this one is cross sectional example and this one is due to circumference and sometimes the you can directly apply the force so you have a nut and you rotate this one then you apply the force so because of this force we can develop the torque so we are not interested this one this one is basically for mechanics not what we are interested in the formation of what shear or shear on this side so normally we have two types of shear that occur one is on lateral surface that is on circumferential surface and second is cross sectional surface one of the assumption says that in a torsion is that circular cross section remain plane that do not wrap and perpendicular to the axis of the shaft so this one is the axis of shaft iska jo perpendicular section hoga that will be remain as perpendicular before you apply the torque and after you apply the torque so this is perpendicular section this one is axis so before the application of torque it will remain as vertical like this and even you apply the torque on this one it will remain as vertical in the same fashion so that is not going to change that is one assumption so this cross section will not deform that is after you apply the torque the section will not become like this this is not possible the shape will remain as a circular shape this is not allowed so that much elasticity is provided to this one it is deformable it is not deformable that if the cross section will change and the distance between the cross section do not change even the this distance is there this will not also vary so it will not going to deform actually if will deform actually then the distance will going to change and deformation is possible along axis if you pull it in this direction so these are the first assumptions so this figure we have form a grid here over the shaft and this if you view from this side then your figure is like this and if you view from this side your figure is like this now before you apply the torque all the horizontal lines will remain as it is but as soon as you apply the torque in this direction then what will happen this lines will going to orient this end is fixed so they will not going to change so initially line was like this now the line become like this the line is initially was like this now become like this so this is a sort of angular deformation is taking place so previously if you considered any section here that is this section or this element which was initially a square in shape is now become this shape you observed here that one of the side has been elongated so if i increase this size it is like this this was my original arrangement and now i will get the deformation along this way this was the original grid and now the line is become like this so initially the line was horizontal it is slightly deformed naturally this effect is due to what shear so it is very true that the shear will going to form in the case of torsion now if this shear is formed it has to be balanced by this shear now the this will for going to produce a couple which was clockwise couple so you have to make one anti clockwise so this is a complete state of stress for this element and in the case of what pure shear because the deformation along x is not permitted neither permitted along y so there is no actual strain only the angular strain is here one line that is drawn parallel to the axis and is joining the periphery is it on periphery line so this line is parallel to your axis let call this point equal to a and this point equal to what b so if you view from this side you will find here this line is somewhere here so this one is point a and this one is so if you go view on this side your point b is here this one is center o and let's say the capital r is the radius of capital r is the radius of the shaft as soon as you apply the torque to this this radial line 
will bend in this direction and will come to this point. It will not going to deform on this side because this is fixed side. So it will come to this side. So this will be equals to B dash. So if you see on this figure, it will be observed like this. Now that deformation is very very small. This point is B dash. So actually your point B dash will come somewhere here correspondingly. So if I say that it will going to form the angle equal to theta in this plane, that is the cross sectional plane, it's called as angular deformation of the shaft. Then this one will form a shear strength that equal to what? Gamma. Is it a form of shear strain? That is the form of shear strain. And we assume that the length of the shaft equals to L. So L is the length of shaft. Capital R is the radius of the shaft. Now the same thing will happen inside also. If you take the inner section, it will going to happen same. So if you take the inner section something like this, so that will also get deformed in the same area. So even if I show like this one, is the angular deformation of all particles is same. But is the linear deformation of all particles are different. So if you take the, if you take this one, so your linear deformation is this. They are variable linear deformation, but they are same angular deformation. And this angle we are calling as gamma angle. So here this one is called as linear deformation and linear deformation is going to vary. But what is remain constant is gamma. Even on this case also, if you take the outer fiber, your angular deformation is theta. And if you take the inner fiber, then also your angular deformation is theta. So there is a deform everywhere. So R is the radius, L is the length, R is any radius, G is the modulus of elasticity, is same as value of E. And remember, E is given by stress upon strength. So G is given by shear stress, shear stress given by shear strength. And from this equation, I can very well form the value of what? Gamma, that is shear strength. So whatever the gamma is there, we'll write this value equal to 10 gamma. Now since gamma is very very small value, we can write this one is equal to sine gamma also. For small value, sine gamma is same as tan gamma. And you can write down this answer directly into radian also. What is the tan actually? Opposite is BB dash divided by this length AB dash. Because this deformation is very very small, so it is as good as AB. So you can use the word for tan formula. In case of tan, is it BB dash divided by AB? Now if you look at BB dash from this side, is it a sector length? And if the sector length is R multiplied by theta. So what you get is gamma. Gamma is given by R multiplied by theta. And what is AB? Is nothing but length of the shaft. So we got the first relation, that is the shear strain is equal to R multiplied by theta by L. But what is gamma? Gamma is given by so we have a first equation that gamma is replaced by tau divided by g is equals to r multiplied by theta divided by l. So this value will be equals to tau divided by capital R is equal to g multiplied by theta divided by l. Now I have to slightly adjust this equation because I am on the outer fiber and this r is on the outer fiber. So it is more generalized equation is that tau divided by small r. Now I have to distinguish this value. So this value will be equals to what then? Max value. This value will be equals to what? Max value. And this is general value. At, so at any radius, shear stress equals to, and on outer radius, your shear stress equals to what? Tau max. So this is the first equation that we have developed. So if you compare the first term and the last term, then what you get is tau is equals to tau, tau max, divided by r, multiplied by small r. And is also good as, same as g, multiplied by theta, divided by l, multiplied by r, that is this term. Now g is a modulus of elasticity. Theta is the angle of deformation and the angle of deformation for r equal to 0, r equal to any value and even r equal to capital R is always constant. L is the length of shaft. It clearly indicates that tau is a function of only r. That is why we have written tau divided by r and tau max by r. So if you go for the first term and the last term, this entire term is what? Constant term. So it is a constant term, then we can claim that tau is proportional to r. What does it indicate? It indicates that if r will increase, tau will also increase. And this relation is as good as y is equals to mx plus where c is equal to what? Zero. That is this distribution is same as the straight line distribution. What is the bending stress? Bending stress is m by i sigma by y. So what is sigma? m by i. So this is sigma is proportional to what? y. Linear distribution. So, just our bending ka distribution hoga, vice versa our shear stress ka distribution hoga. Sir, if bending ke under our pass mein plus minus y hota hai, kyunki hum y kahan se measure karenge? Because sigma is equal to what? Is it plus minus y? Plus minus sigma? 
because we have y is equal to what plus minus y because it was measured from what neutral axis as such there is no facility measured for plus minus y because if you measure on this side is also r and you measure on this side is also r so everywhere any direction you have to only write r you can't write plus r and minus r so at the center exactly at this point your r is zero your shear stress is also zero and then as the radial distance will increase the shear stress will also increase so it will go on increasing and it's a max value on outer fiber how to join them so naturally you have to join them with a straight line and what does it indicate that at any distance r your corresponding shear stress is tau and if you are on the outer fiber then you are equal to capital r then corresponding value equal to tau max and if you continue this graph you can extend this line on this side also and you can continue the variation to show like this but remember the effect of this torque and effect of this torque is same it is not compression and this this one is anti clockwise as well as also anti clockwise